Hey, good morning, almost afternoon. Hi, everyone. I trust everyone's having a blessed day. Uh, it is time for Thursday's devotion. It will be into Joshua in chapter 6 and covering verses 11 through 16. So let's go ahead and get started here uh, with verse 11. It says, And there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak tree, uh, which was in Oprah, or Oprah, uh, that pertained to Joash the Abrazite, Abrazite uh, son of Gideon, threshed wheat by the winepress to hide from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. And Gideon said, Gideon said unto him, O my Lord, if thou be with us, then why is all this befallen us? And where is his miracles, which our fathers told us of, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. Verse 14, And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? And he said unto him, O my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with thee, and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. <clears throat> so as we continue on here, um, and the other guys have done a really good job um, setting everything up, and we're just seeing the hand of God move here. Uh, through this devotion, and uh, Brother Andrew shared the other night and had a chart, and in, in essence, here's what the chart covered, uh, obedience, disobedience, bondage, repentance, and deliverance, and we see this being the cycle of, of Israel, and so um, we're here kind of in the bondage phase right now, uh, and, and we find Gideon, um, and of course, the title of this one is the commission of Gideon, and we find Gideon in um in hiding, you know, he, he's in the uh, wine press and the studies that I've showed, the wine press is going to be at the down the valley, um, up in the upper regions is where the vineyards would be and they would pick the grapes, bring them down to the wine press and not have to carry the wine, the grapes up the hill. Uh, and so wine presses were down in the valley. Uh, most of the time your threshing floors were up on the mountaintop where the wind is a little bit stronger. Um, and so we find Gideon here down in the valley hiding in the wine press, trying to uh, thresh the wheat to keep the Midianites from stealing it. Um, and, and I'm sure that's not going well for him. You know, with the lack of wind, he's throwing it up. The dust and everything else is just coming back on him as opposed to the wind blowing it. Um, so he's probably a little frustrated at this point in time. And and here comes this angel, which I believe is, you know, an incarnate of, of Christ, um, who has come before him and, you know, is, I find the humor in it, you mighty man of valor, you know. And Gideon's probably looking over his shoulder and, you know, who, who's, who are you talking to? You know, I'm, I'm hiding. And I've got it list here. Uh, that, you know, Gideon had eye trouble. And, you know, we did a play uh, at the church. We was in the old fellowship hall, I don't know, probably 15 years ago, if not longer. Um, and, and one of the songs that we sung in that was, and it was the kids, and, of course, I was like a, an angel in it or something, and we had a meeting with the kids, and the kid kept saying, you know, I can't do this, I can't do this. And, and he had eye trouble, and we sung a song, and it says, eye trouble is my trouble. Uh, and it's getting out of hand. And, and that's truly the, the case here with uh, Gideon. You know, um, God said, you mighty man of valor. And so although we laugh at that, that here he is in hiding, and God's calling him a mighty man of valor, you warrior. You know, um, if he was a warrior, he wouldn't be hiding from the enemy. But that's where he's at. Uh, and, and that's the good news about this story here, is that God has the final say in who we are, you know. Gideon goes back and says, I can't do this. I'm this. I'm that. You know, and of course he starts off giving, kind of laying the blame on God. Like, you know, our fathers told, told us about these great miracles and stuff that, that was going to happen in Egypt and that, that they saw in Egypt. And, you know, where's our part at? You know, here we are back in bondage 
and and where you at, God? Um, you know, and God doesn't really even, I'm sure he, I know he heard those things because he hears us when we cry out to him, but he just finally, you know, said, get in, you know, here's where we're at now and here's what we're doing. Um, and, you know, and God has the final say about who you are. And, and, you know, I'd have to start here with a confession of this eye trouble. Um, I've had some eye trouble this week as well uh, as we, you know, uh, we're in the process of beginning a new school year, and, you know, I was venting, came in Monday, bad news. I uh, was telling Andrew, you know, I was just in a bad mood, and I don't like this. I've been teaching school for 25 years, and, you know, this is the first time I'm not looking forward to starting, and I this, I that. You know, I had a lot of eye trouble. Um, I don't want to do this. And I even in my prayers, I was taking it before God and says, God, I don't like this. I don't like where we're at. I don't like, you know, what's going on and all this stuff here. Um, you know, and then the second point here is the good news as well. God will meet you where you are. Um, you know, we can go through a lot of stuff in this world uh, and we will. But the good news is, is that, you know, God's going to meet us right where we are. Um, a lot of people will try to tell you who you are, what you are circumstances will sometimes you know back us in a corner and, and we're not going to like it and i don't like these circumstances i don't like whatever you know pandemics i don't like marital problems i don't like the fact that you know um, you took something that was dear to me or i lost you know a, a dear loved one and you know or um i'm going through a you know, a sickness of my own or someone I love is going through a, a sickness. And I, 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 and so many times we let our circumstances dictate it. Um, but, you know, as we said at the beginning, God has the final say about who you are and he will meet you where you are. Uh, a lot of people working to try to clean themselves up so they can come and, you know, um, before God, you know, but God's, God's a loving, loving father and, and he's gracious and, you know, He's going to walk through it with us. And yeah, I don't like a lot of things that's going on right now, but God's right there with me. And he says, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. And, you know, that's good news. <laughs> that is, that's great news. Uh, that's the kind of news that, you know, helps us to dust ourselves off and keep on keeping on. Uh, the third thing we see here in this devotion, you know, it don't always make sense uh, what God's doing. His ways don't always make sense. Here we got a mighty man of valor hiding in the, in the wine press, and that's not where he's supposed to be. But God says, hey, I'm going to use you. All right. Um, and, and the second part of that promise is, you know, yeah, his ways don't make sense, but his presence is our promise. And so you go back to any of the circumstances I was talking about before, no matter what you're going through. God says, I'm right there with you. Uh, you know, and so many times our eye trouble causes us to get bitter on God. You know, um, why did God allow this to happen? Why did God allow that to happen? Why, why are we in a pandemic? Why are we whatever? You know, why is so-and-so going through this, that, or the other? Um, but we know this, that God's presence is, is his promise. It's, it's with us. He says that, you know, as a child of God, he's going to always be with us. And the second part is his way is perfect. You know, Gideon right now would say this doesn't make sense. And, and this is just a kind of a preview uh, of the story. As you'll see in the, the days ahead, uh, it's only going to get a little bit crazier. God's going to, you know, uh, just keep adding to this. And, 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 and the purpose of it is this, not so Gideon, you know, watch him squirm or nothing. But God's going to let Israel know, hey, I'm in control here. I'm in control. You know, and I, I like what his word says here. You go in uh, 1 Corinthians in uh, verses 26 and 27, there's chapter one. It says, for ye see your calling, brethren, how not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, uh, not many noble are called. And J. Vernon McGee goes as far as to say, you know, that sometimes people are too, you know, uh, too mighty or too noble, too smart. For God to use, uh, and and obviously they're not, but but we feel that, you know, I got this, God, I can handle this problem on my own, or you know, well, God, I, this is, you know, we we try to figure things out, um, you know, and, and God's not going to use that stuff. He he doesn't need our help. He just needs our availability. 
to allow him to work through us and he can do great things. Because uh, God hath chosen, verse 27, the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. You know, the Bible's full of foolish things that don't make a lot of sense. You know, um, Moses in the bulrush is going to defeat the mighty Pharaoh. Doesn't make sense. You know, a baby in a manger is going to come and be the savior of the world. Um, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. Uh, and then we can close right here with this in 2 Samuel 22 and 31. As for God, his way is perfect. And so you might be in a Gideon moment right now. It doesn't look perfect. You know, this is not the circumstances I would paint. This is not the picture I would want, you know, to paint for anyone right now. Um, but God's way is perfect. God's way is perfect. And, you know, even with Gideon uh, in bondage, feeling like he's the least of his father's house, um, you know, and, and getting commissioned to go and defeat the Midianites, um, God's way is going to prove to be perfect. Uh, the word of the Lord is tried, and he is a buckler to all of them that trust him. And so this morning, um, you know, my prayer is this. Keep trusting. Keep trusting in, in God. His ways are perfect, and, you know, it may not look it right now. Uh, but again, you know, we, we look on the, what, what we can see, the natural. But God works in the, in the supernatural. Um, his ways are higher than ours. He's doing things that we can't see. Our job is to trust. And so this morning, I, I pray that you will trust God no matter what it is that you're going through. Uh, if you've got eye trouble, well, the good news is God can take care of that as well. Just confess. Uh, I've done a lot of confessing this week, I have to admit. Um, but, you know, God's grace is sufficient. And, and I'm so thankful that he meets us right where we're at and that we can trust his plan because his plan is perfect. Hope you guys have just a wonderful, wonderful day. We love you, and, and we look forward to seeing you again.